Well, hello there. My name is Jay with Server Matter and also with CompuMatter. And the purpose of this video is to show you how to use Burp Backup. And that has nothing to do with Burp Suite. This is Burp Backup by Graham Keeling. And we're going to use it to backup a Windows client to the Burp server. Let me show you how it's done. To start with, we've got to get the Burp Windows binary installed on our client machines. Now, if you go to the Burp releases page, as shown here, you've got a lot of different versions. You really want to match up the version that you download with the version of Burp server that you have running to ensure compatibility. It may be that a newer version of the Windows client will work, but if you want to guarantee match it. So let's slide over to the burp uh, to the server and type in burp dash capital V and that will give you the version number we're looking for. And there we are here. Click on the assets to drop that down and we will choose the burp win64 installer. All right, let's go ahead and install that. Let's talk about what we've got here. It prompts you for your server's IP address. It says the name or address of the server. We'll put in our server's IP address in this case. The server port, which defaults to what they provide on the server installation portion, which we will leave alone. The client name, that's a big one. Let's talk about that. It is the name of a file that you inserted on the server side. That this, that this program is going to communicate with. And let me open that up for you. Within your server's burp server configuration file, you've got a variable called client configuration directory or abbreviated as such. And here you need to tell burp where is it it's supposed to look for the client configuration files. So that's step one. Now, if we look at the client configuration file directory, in this case, we should see some client files. This is an example file that I've set up for ourselves. This is the file for our server's backup. And this is the file for the one we're using for this demonstration, VM1 backup. Now, this file is going to have a couple of client configurations that are part of the handshaking of the Windows client and the server uh, ha giving it permission to actually do the backup. They have to communicate with each other. That's a, a security protocol to make sure that, that somebody knows both ends of this transaction. To give you an example, let me take you inside this um, VM1 backup before I go any further. Okay, you'll notice there's a password. And here we generated a simple one for the sake of the tutorial of ABC123. Well, we've got to put that on the Windows client side and they better match each other or it's not going to happen. But before it even gets to the password, it's going to find the file VM1 backup. And the way that it finds that file is we tell it right here, instead of what you see here, Windows Matter, VM1 backup. Now it'll choose Windows Matter happens to be the host name of this virtual machine. Now there's certainly an argument and it may make more sense just to roll with the host name and then make the client file on the server match the host name, all things said and done, that's probably going to make the most sense. There are going to be those situations where clients change their host name uh, and you might have a harder time matching things up, but that's going to be the exception, not the rule. All right, password. Here we have a bunch of characters. We'll change that. That's their default to ABC123. And so now we've got a match of the client file name and we have a match of the password inside that file and that'll cause this to work. Next, poll every 20 minutes. Let me explain that. Um, it's a cron job, essentially. It uses Windows um, scheduler, but it is in fact a cron job. Every X minutes, it's gonna go out and attempt a backup. Uh, the default here is 20. I'll leave it there for now. And by the way, it's going to depend in part, it'll run every 20 minutes, but if the if you have a timer running on the Burp server and this hasn't fit into the timer criteria, it will just go away. It'll run, say, oh, timer on the server says do differently, and that'll be the end of that. 
um, and we will go ahead and uh, continue. We're not going to encrypt it. Uh, auto upgrade. So do we want the server to upgrade this client automatically? I'll say yes to that. Can the server restore backups? I'll say yes to that. That means we can control a backup from the server side, uh, not just the client side. And we do want to do that. We'll click next. Directories to backup. That's going to be important. So by default, it gets everybody in the users folder, which is great. Um, but there's going to be a lot of times when there are specific directories. Uh, in addition to that, we'll give you an example. We'll just browse on this computer and we'll pick something else. We'll tell it to also back up the flash drive. So now it'll get both of those. So you can have as many unique directories in here as you want to. Uh, I know we have some clients we put QuickBooks data outside of the users folder. We've got some other clients that have their own things that are outside that users folder. Okay, we'll click finish, done. Okay, one of the things I want you to know is it actually does go in your apps and features or programs uh, under the name of Burp. So you'll see it there, it can be removed from there. Although I have noticed when it does get removed, it doesn't remove the files that it installs. And perhaps that's in case you want to use them again, those default configurations will be there. But what it installs is under program files, the directory burp, and then everything under that. An important one is this burp configuration file. Let's take a look at that. Now, this VM1 backup, well, that's the name of the file that we plugged in that matches the name, uh, the file by the same name on the server. The password must match the contents within that file on the server. These are the drives that we wish to back up. This is the IP address and port number of the server. So far, so good. Now let's talk about some of these things down here. The burp CA file is a batch script that's going to be run in the event that these SSL values are not found. And they're not there right now. So this file is going to run. You don't need to do anything with that. It's just pointing uh, to itself. The SSL key password defaults to password. I haven't fooled with that and dug into where that can be changed and why. Okay, the SSL peer CN must match the common name in the SSL certificate that the server gives when it connects. If the SSL peer CN is not set, the server name will be used instead. My experience has been that that needs to set or it fails on subsequent efforts. So I would just make sure that matches. Let's take a look at that on the server side. We will edit the burp server configuration file. And right here you will find CA server name and that's what it needs to match. Server can restore. We answered yes to that, so it put a one. I forget what split VSS and strip VSS is. You can research that one. Uh, auto upgrade. Yes, I would like to auto upgrade the software uh, if that proves to be available. So that's a brief rundown on the burp configuration file. Now I'd like you to take note that there are no SSL files in there, even though our burp configuration file said that there is, you see. It says where it's supposed to find them in the burp directory, but there are none there yet. Okay, I want to open up the task scheduler because that's something burp created an entry for when it installed the software. You can see it right here at the top. Burp ready when it was installed will trigger every, every 20 minutes. I'd like you to notice at the bottom, it says that it will run whether the user is logged in or not which is uh, certainly preferred behavior. And if we click on the Actions tab, we see that it's going to start the program, Burp EXE, with the flags dash A T, which is a timer reference. So if we do nothing right now, 20 minutes from the time that we installed it, it's going to attempt to do a backup. But we're going to trigger that to start right now so that we can ensure the communication between the server and the client is solid because it could be that that scheduler could run, the backup could fail, and we'd never know why. So we're going to log in as an administrator to the command prompt, and we're going to type in burp space al. 
Now, what Burp AL is going to do is create a list of any of our current backups from this device. Well, since we just installed it, we're not going to have any backups, but it's going to do something else. It's going to cause a relationship to occur between this client and the server. And in doing so, it's going to automatically generate the certificate files that we need, and it's going to verify that the handshake between our server and this client is actually valid so that we can depend on it for backups from this point forward. If this list fails in any way, then we can expect the backups to not be dependable. So we should do this going in. We'll do a burp-al. And I'll highlight a couple of things. First of all, could not find an SSL cert at the program files burp SSL so on location. These are the three files that we said exist in the configuration file. Here it's throwing an error that it can't find them. But that's normal because further down it says uh, generating an SSL key insert signing request, running the burp CA batch file, which in fact creates these same cert files. Uh, part of this process also deposits a VM1 backup CSR file in the burp CA folder of the client as well as on the server. Now I have had this list hang up here before and if it does hang up just control C it'll get past it. The list finishes okay all is well. <clears throat> now let's take a look at the burp directory. We'll notice that three new files have been created and in the CA folder we'll notice we've got a CSR. If we flip over to the server and we look at the server's CA file under etc. burp CA, we will see that it in fact created a cert file and a CSR file there as well. So now we have a reason to believe the backup will run properly. Now just to show you that it's working, I know we had to control C out of it. I'm going to burp AL again and it very quickly makes a connection, lets you know the list finishes okay. That's because it's already created the certs. So that part's done. I want to point out, going back to the server side for a minute, that during the course of the installation, Burp creates the client uh, report, the place where the backup is going to go, the storage location, uh, based on whatever you have in your server configuration as being that location. So that's ready to go. So let's go ahead, instead of waiting for the cron job, let's do a Burp space A space B to actually kick off our first backup. All right, you can see that backup moving along and we can see that the backup is being created on the server side. I want to talk a little bit about timers. Uh, in the uh, client, at the Windows client, that burp cron job or scheduler is going to run burp uh, dash A space T which is to say, use the timer. So the first timer it's going to look at is the timer that's on the burp server. So you'll notice here, the burp server says uh, it should run every 20 hours um, to make sure that no backups are older than that and that it should be on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on at these particular hours. And if the backup does not fit within those parameters based on the information Burp currently has on that client backup, it's just going to return, it's not going to back up anything and that'll be the end of that. Well, if you want to back, back up more frequently than that, maybe the every 20 minutes, um, then you need to make sure you override this on the client file. Okay, so this is our client file and here we are overriding it with timer argument, zero seconds, timer argument always. So this is going to take its cue from the burp, burp cron job and just do the backup every 20 minutes. Now let's talk about what happens when you do the, burp, the backup every 20 minutes. There can be a sense on your part as it was on mine to believe that that's going to result in a lot of data ending up on your server from that client. And that's not what happens. It's going to do the subsequent backups and it's going to check to see what's changed. And what's changed is what's going to be recorded to the next backup. Um, it's not going, you're not going to have any more data than it takes for the difference of the, pre, of the previous backup 
and the current backup. And that'll be the case ongoing. And eventually, uh, not knowing exactly how Burp does what it does, but at some point, uh, you'll see deletable, deletable, deletable. It'll shuffle the deck in some way, um, and it'll keep whatever your backup, the, the backups that contain all your data within those files that do not say deletable. All right, I want to swing back to the backup itself. It has finished. We've got bytes in backup of 14.47. I think it must, it says estimated, so maybe it estimated originally what it thought it was going to need. But anyway, it's done, no errors, as advertised. Now let's swing back to the server for a moment where the backup is uh, being stored. And we look at the drive, we get an LSL of the contents of that client. We see uh, there's the actual directory. Um, and interestingly enough, when we look at the block size and gigabytes of that directory, it shows up as seven gigabytes, not 14. So we're looking at about 50% compression. And that's it. That's what's involved in backing up your client's data using the Burp backup software. Be sure to look at the companion video that talks about how to restore the same Windows clients from your server back to your client or just to the server itself. And uh, if you like the video, please click the like button. And if you're so inclined, please subscribe and you'll have a front row seat every time one of my videos come out. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.